This morning we thought we'd show you how to do some splits. This is just the natural splitting, getting the, letting the gals breed their own queens, which um, I think is pretty efficient. As long as you've got some bees that are nice and friendly and are really productive, then you don't mind multiplying. These girls here have been really good until today when they're really shitty, so I don't know what's going on with that, so I don't know, I might review this project. They've already bitten the cameraman twice, which is fun. Well, not, he's a little paranoid right now. I'm not sure if he's gonna go on with this filming thing. He's like going, oh, I don't know about this. But anyway, so these are the girls we put in the paradise boxes here about a month ago, and they're breeding up quite nice, and they're only here and at home, and there's not a whole lot for them to work on, but they seem to be breeding fine. They're not making a whole lot of honey, but that's not their fault. So I thought this morning what we're going to do is show you the first stage that we're going to set it up and then we'll come back this afternoon and we'll drop them in some nuke boxes and then we'll see where they go from there. There's the usual ritual. We'll give them a little bit of smoke. I was reading something interesting about smoking in the old days. Apparently, they used to use tobacco. So that would have been pretty weird. Obviously, back in the day, there was heaps of tobacco farming going on with the bee farming, and it's probably all the crappy leaves they couldn't sell. But how fucked up would that be for the bees? Imagine that. All the lung cancer people would get really psycho. Would that put nicotine in the honey? That, that might be an interesting thought. I wonder if we could do that, nicotine honey. What do you reckon? Anyway. <laughs> oh. Hello everybody. Morning, morning. What's going on? Fresh bit of fresh honey coming along. Now, anyway, so what we're gonna do, this is obviously just the super where the top of the, where they're storing a bit of honey. So what we're gonna do is we wanna get into the brood box and we want to find some fresh brood that we're going to raise up and we're going to stick up here in the top here and let the girls run up to look after it and then this afternoon we'll have some nurse bees that we can take off and we can put in a different box or in a little new box so we're going to take two frames out the top i found two frames seems to work good because then when you pull them out later on you'll see we'll pull out two frames like that and then all the girls are stuck in the middle a bit Help. oh nearly fell over even drunk yet. Right, now ladies. So you are a bit busy down here under the queen excluder. This is where the main action's going on at the moment because they're still breeding up. We don't actually want to get the queen because that would be a bit silly. But she's got to stay in here to keep her this keep this box alive. Let's take this frame out first so then it'll give us somewhere to play. Generally the outside frames are more honey than brood, so that's a good way to go. But these girls, because in these cool paradise boxes, they don't mind the outside, so it looks like they're laying eggs everywhere. Ooh, look at that. <sighs> Actually, this might be a bloody good one right there anyway, but that's beautiful and young. Now, I'll just do a bit of a check to see whether there's no queen here. But we'll shake them all off anyway, I can't see her there. So I'm not sure how we're going here in the sunlight, but let's have a look. See now this is all capped brood here. This is obviously not very busy, but it's enough. But you see in here, there's the white, like there's little little young larvae. In amongst that, there's also some little eggs right at the bottom here, there's some eggs. So if we take this frame and we put it above the queen excluder, all the nurse bees will run up here and then they'll look after this brood. And then when we take them and put them in a newt box, they'll turn that larvae and those eggs into little queen cells and which is what we want. So I reckon we might just take that one, even though it's not much, you don't need a whole lot anyway, because when you split them off, sometimes they, they don't keep all the brood alive anyway. But what we're looking for is the bit of capped brood, but also young eggs and young larvae. Because once the, once the brood's capped, of course, it's no good to us for what we're trying to achieve here. So you know, we might just dig a little bit further. The interesting thing is, when they make the caps here, that's a mixture of wax and pollen. So is that the little larvae inside there can actually breathe, which is kind of amazing. 
So they're smart enough to know that when they're breeding, they need their little larvae needs to be able to breathe. So they're in here and they've mixed wax and pollen together. And so they've made it so that's basically porous. So it's protected and it's nice and cozy, but the, but the little larvae in there can breathe. But when they are making honey, they make it pure wax. So they put a pure wax coating on the top of the honey on the top of the honeycomb, which is getting formed around the edge here yet, but it hasn't happened yet. And so then the honey is purely protected and airtight. So we're bringing that pretty bloody clever little critters, aren't they? So we're just looking for the right bit of brood that we want. I would like one that has a bit of honey around the edge as well. And give them an oh, this is the one. That's a good one. And then we'll steal some honey off the top. Can't see the my, Her Majesty running around here anywhere, but that doesn't really matter. I can see where she's been. So we'll shake this off of here in a minute. But look at those nice young larvae she's got in here. This is going to be perfect. That's just ideal. That's because that'll be able to turn it into a queen cell. Now, if you really get excited, you're supposed to buddy put them up above the thing and wait for a bit so as that you get perfect two day old eggs and all the rest of it. But hell, you know, who's got time for all that excitement? For what we're trying to achieve, even though this is a really nice pattern and this is all really good brood, there's no hope in hell of them making a queen out of that because they're already going to be bees any minute now. There's a couple of little larvae in the middle here that have been rehatched, but all of this stuff is already decided what it's going to be. See that little risen one there? I'd be tipping that that's going to be a boy. That'll be a drone drone cell. It's up a bit higher and a bit longer, a bit bigger, and they've ripped the sides out of the other ones. So they're raising a few boys. And of course the interesting thing is they're raising boys for the neighbours. They don't actually have sex in their own box. Now that's pretty crazy. Back in the day, people used to think that they would mate inside the hive. Now if you were going to be a nice safe little queen bee, you know, having sex in the dark in here, you'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? But they don't do that. They go off and fly up into the sky and they send the boys to... I think it's a drone collection point or something, so they'll find a nice cool spot to hang out together. Probably like down the local bar, really, but for bees. And they'll sit around and wait for the queen to fly past and then f fix her up nicely. I was going to say something else rude, but my mum will tell me off. They fly all the way back to the hive, and away she goes. In a day, she starts laying eggs. But I thought that was pretty amazing, because I guess if they made boys and then they mated inside the hive, well, they'd all get horribly into bread, wouldn't they? It's going to push this back together. Try to keep all the brood that's still in the original hive together because it's a bit of a chore otherwise. You want to keep them, you want to keep them all kind of on the same page so they're all working and they don't have to spread out too much because they don't like that. Now we're going to put our two frames from upstairs back in here so then they can use that. They've started to build a bit of wax foundation, a bit, you know, build that out a bit. They haven't put any nectar in there so that'll be all right. They'll soon convert that over. So those two frames are from the top, and then we're going to put our clean excluder on. So then we're going to put our super back on. Now hopefully there's enough brood on here to tempt them up here. And then we'll put these two with a nice young brood above the queen excluder. So you want the nice eggs. You want eggs and really uncapped larvae. Otherwise you're wasting your time. And you, uh, we'll put our little cover on. Yeah, do we remember which is which? It's gonna be two from the end, all right? So I try to, what I try to do, you can either get a texter pen, if you bloody ever remember to bring one with you, but I just try to do it and put them all in the same spot. So when I come back this afternoon, I'll know where they are. So we'll come back this afternoon and straighten that out. Like we'll let the, the nurse bees will run up onto that brood and then we'll take them off and we'll stick them in the little nuke boxes. And then um, in about 10 days, they'll make some, well, they'll make them quicker than that. But in about 10 days, I normally open them up to see how they've got on, see how many queen cells they've made. And then sometimes you can, if you want to get real excited, you can split some of those queen cells off. If you've got some renegade bees that you don't really want to breed from, you can take the queen cells that you've made and actually do the same thing, but actually put a queen cell in with the new split. So anyway, as you'd all know, you've got to get your letters on your bee boxes. But we thought we might do something a bit snazzy, so we put a little whoosh bee man on there as well with our letters. 
So we thought that might be cool. Anyway, we've got these ones that we've painted over the top of the other letters and we're going to have a crack at doing this. So we'll see what happens. What do you reckon? I don't know about MBC. Write in and tell me what do you reckon that stands for because it's just the letters they gave me. Number three on the list of ones I wanted. Because BBM I think is already taken. You gotta love the insect world, don't you? I mean, tell you what, talk about ants being creatures of opportunity. I mean, it's a, instead of a dog eat dog world, it's an ant eat bee world. So we've got these poor little bees that obviously are at the end of their life cycle and have sort of fallen to the ground. And uh, nature said, well, waste not, want not. So the ants have come along and had a bit of a feast. And um, yeah, these are just little ones. We've got bull ants and big kick ass ants and whatever else. But that's pretty, pretty unreal. It wastes, like, the nature doesn't waste nothing. I wonder what they do with the sting. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, in the ant movie and that guy was holding up the pole and being the king, maybe that was a bee stinger. What do you reckon? That's possible. <laughs> Put our little stencil on here. Got me a little spray can. This isn't really graffiti though, is it? Because it's not going to be that cool. <laughs> Don't any of you kids are getting any ideas. Ta-da! Cool. <laughs> How cool do I look? Look at that, that's my... See, little big fat ass. <laughs> so that's our, that's my talented, talented lad that cut that out for me. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? We might start a whole new fashion. <laughs> We might as well brand everything, we're looking so cool. Some prick might want to steal our drum. God. Sorry, Mum. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at that. The Bush Bee Man, he's coming to a shop near you. <laughs> no, actually, he's coming to a website near you. <laughs> oh, it's getting beautiful and hot here in the Riverland yet again. But anyway, oh, God, I'll just take a breath. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying our bee show. One would assume you're enjoying it if you're still watching. So we've been having fun making it for you. Of course, you know, like if you want to see us travel around a little bit more and see a few more cool places, like we could travel around Australia or overseas and see what other beekeepers are doing, just sign up to our Patreon trade. And you know, every dollar helps and you never know what fun we might get up to. Like that, right? Good morning. <sighs> Keep it off the floor, that would be good. <laughs> I reckon we need to put something up. So what are we doing? We're just doing the going to be stenciling in the shed instead of in the field. Because in the field was a little bit stupid. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna try and oh, I better not do that wise friggin' glad wrap thing that I am getting deep shit. Oh, what about that piece of stuff? <laughs> yeah. Oh look at that. What the hell are you? Oh, so Brilliant. <laughs> Go with the magic wand and it can all happen. This hocus pocus abracadabra spray my bee boxes with my magic. <laughs> you nearly made a rhyme. Just about, then I fell in a hole. I know. Anyway, what are we doing? About there, you reckon? That looks like a go. Dun 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 dun. I think I need a glove. These things look like the wife's working gloves, garden gloves. What do you reckon? Yep. I'm not going to get them on anyway. It's like the OJ Simpson trial. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm not guilty, honey. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay. While we're here full arsing around, I don't know if you remember the, um, Easy to a temple paradise video. Now, 
Only the Bush B-Man, I think, could put this back to front. Here we go, look, we've got... Right, here's, a, here's the upside, right, cool. Bloke goes to put the frames in, he's thinking, yep, yep, all good, all good. But they don't quite go together because some whacker has got this one upside down. So anyway, just be a little bit careful <laughs> when you put these together that you've got them right. I've found out now that you want to lay them in a uniform pattern so you don't have to think about it too much. But anyway, no one else will have this problem. But So if anybody has an idea how the hell I'm going to cut that off of there and redo it, because I don't think it's going to happen, is it? Cameraman's laughing, but you know what? Well, he's always laughing, so it's all good. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Don't do that, because that's a bad idea. What do you reckon MBC stands for? Well, I don't know. I was just trying to work it out. You know, MBC, what did I say? Might be confused, but. Whew. There's a bit easier job in the shed than in the paddock. I don't know that we planned that, but that makes us green and gold. It's the Aussie Bee Man. <laughs> oh. Well, that's kind of cool. I reckon that looks going to look quite good. <sighs> I don't know about who this bloke is, but anyway. <laughs> MBC, those are the letters the blokes gave me. So here we go, it's all good. Anyway, I think that looks pretty cool. It's a lot easier to do it here in the shed before we get out in the field. But I had to wait for my artist bloke to cut my legs up, because, you know, I don't know. You wouldn't believe how hard that is to do. <laughs> well, it probably isn't hard for anybody with some artistic skills, but I can't even clap in the rhythm, so. Rightio, so we're just getting a few of these frames organized for this split. So I'm just gonna put these clear ones in these boxes so we can just cart them over to the boxes that we're doing. And then we'll be able to swap these frames for the frames that we're gonna take out of those hives over there with the brood on and a little bit of honey. And then the ladies should get themselves all excited because they'll pop out and they'll wake up tomorrow morning and they'll go, mother f And I'll say, we haven't got a, we haven't got a boss. We better make one. And so they'll get some of the young eggs and they'll get organised and they'll, and that's, you've got to put a frame of honey. I usually put one either side. You don't need it to be ridiculous, but they need some honey and they want some pollen. And usually on your brood comb, well, if you look there, when you get that, you want the pollen on your brood comb because they generally need that to make the royal jelly. So they somehow or other, and I don't know exactly how it happens, but they must munch up the stuff basically spit it into the honeycomb and feed the little larvae. And with a normal bee, she gets royal jelly until day three, I think it is. But a queen, she gets royal jelly the whole time until she gets sealed up after 10 days or something like that. But I'm gonna get corrected on all that, but it's around about that sort of time frame. And then she'll hatch out and turn into a queen and next thing you know, and then she's got to go and have a bit of a notch on up and up out for a fly and find a bloke or 10 or 20. Anyway, so here we go. We're just going to do these couple. We've only got two left to go. We've done the rest. So we're just going to get these last two because we had to go and get some more boxes, which is typical of me. Anyway, <laughs> we, so we're just going to pull the lid off of this one. I'll take the frames out of here. Let's pop these frames on the neighbor here. That'll be the way for it, that'll work. We haven't smoked any of them yet, so, well, we're, so we're just going to see what happens with these two, because I've uh, got the smoker over in the shed and I've run out of enthusiasm for that. So we'll see how crazy they are. So hopefully the ladies are all up here, having a bit of a feed around, having a bit of a play about. Let's pop you over here in the box. Some of them will stay in there, maybe. No, don't be stupid. <laughs> now, you remember where we are? Pretty sure those two, isn't it? Dead. See, this is where I should have put the texture marking in, shouldn't I? Anyway, what I normally try to do 
Let's get it and just leave the two together. So I used to do it one at a time, and I just found if you take the whole, if you take two at a time, they seem to be you seem to get a nice, just a nice amount. So there's all the all the nice nest bees. Let's pop them in there. That's all the nice little nurse bees that have run up to look after those girls, look after the babies. Give them some honey. I'll take some honey from over here because there's some nice spot of bees on this frame. Not all of these will stay in here, but at least more the merrier. Pop the lid back on there. Get that organised. They're looking good. We've got the door shut at the front. Anyway, then we're going to get this one and take it over there. But now we'll just pop the fresh frames up in the honey super and it should be all good and we'll shut her down and the girls can go back and we'll stop annoying them. Try not to bump them if you haven't got too much smoke going because they did a bit toey. Put me fancy bit of mesh on. Our mate Bill told us to do that and it seems to work quite good rather than the mat when it's hot. If you really wanted to get excited you can pop your, now that it's cooled off a bit, you can pop the nuke on the ground over here and you can just shake some bees out in front of it and the nurse bees will run up into here and the other ones will fly home but we'll, what i normally just what i normally do is i just get out here i'll come out here tomorrow and i'll just lift the lid off and i'll just have a bit of a suss as to how many bees have sort of settled in and if i think oh, they're a bit light on i'll give them a bit of a topper but anyway whether that's right or wrong or indifferent i don't know there seems to be enough opinions out there to sink a battleship pop that over here on the back of the pallet <laughs> So we just thought we'd have a bit of a look in our nuke boxes. This is where we put them in the shade, as you remember. So we thought we'd just crack them open about 10 days into this project. Just see what the um, little queen cells and how the girls have got on with their making. Because they're pretty fascinating little critters. They're having a bit of fun with the ants at the moment because I was reading this book and it said that maybe you can spray them with sugar syrup to calm them down and make them feel like they enjoy your visits. Well, they enjoyed the sugar syrup, but the ants have really enjoyed it too. So I've got myself a bit of a problem trying to kill the bloody bull ants and not kill my girls, so I don't know. Anyway, you know, what does it say? You have one good thing and ten shit things? I don't know, something like that anyway. Anyway, let's have a look what they're doing. Okay, so here they all the ladies are. We'll have a bit of a look. So I've got the honey, the honey frames that we've put on either side, because they need honey, obviously, to feed the little brood that we're trying to create. Honey and pond is what they make the royal jelly with. And okay, so we've got to take the outside one that's just honey. So hopefully we don't kill any queen cells that are in here. But you know what? Yeah. Probably, I don't know. Sometimes you shouldn't go anywhere near them. Just come back in a month and just be bloody done with it. But still. Well, the purpose of this, we'll have a look. So that's just our honey. Now, this is the brood that we picked up. Try to be nice and careful. Let's see what they've done. Not on that one anyway. Fuck. Oh, hang on, they're on the next one, that's why. No, there's nothing on that brood. So they didn't find anything there worth having. Well, unless I stole that one. I can't remember any one of them. Okay, let's have a look here. Oh, here we go. This is what we're looking for. So they've drawn out these cells here that were the young eggs and stuff. Young eggs and larvae. And here's all the queen cells hanging down here that they've decided to use. Now, if you're completely psycho, you can get your knife and basically cut them out. But I don't know, I would be a bit cautious with this one. I'd probably take that one down here by itself because you go cutting through there, unless you're really good with a nice sharp little Stanley knife or something. And then you can take that cell and put it in another box. Or if you're really excited and you've got a f couple of these, which is you've got two frames, just take the whole bloody frame and put it in a different brood box. Which is what I did over there. I stole one of these and stuck it in a box over there to see if it will go. So this is where they've got this little egg here and they're starting to turn her into a queen. You can see that they're still feeding a little bit of raw jelly. The only sad part is that that girl's probably never going to make it because one of these other ones are going to hatch out first and go and sting her ass to death. She's a real bugger. So the girls got all this trouble. But anyway, they're hedging their bets. So 
in some some people would say that you're meant to kill all, kill a few of them off, pick out, but I don't know how you pick out which is the best one. I guess maybe the biggest ones are the better ones. So maybe we should kill those little ones. Would that mean that they're... No, no, there's so much conjecture. Careful, we'll pop them back all back in here. Try not to crush the cell, because they're still very delicate at this stage. They get stronger and stronger when they build more and more wax around them. Put that there to hopefully not smash anything. Put the honey back in. So they, you basically need honey, pollen. They can go and get a bit of pollen. Like they are pretty diligent. They'll, they'll do their best to do the right thing. But if you give them some pollen, some honey, and obviously some eggs or, or young larvae, eggs is good, or, or the young three day old larvae, then they'll turn, make the, because they need the honey and the pollen to make the royal jelly that they munch up and feed to their larvae. And then you've got yourself some queens. So in about, by the weekend, what are we up to? Wednesday. So about, I think it's about 16 days. So about next, early next week, the queen should hatch. The only trouble is, the only thing I reckon queens have got wrong is that the queen should go out, do the mating thing, and then come back and kill her opposition. Because sometimes they fly off and never come back because they get eaten by a bird or friggin' run into a power line or I don't know what they do, but anyway. And then the bees are screwed. <laughs> So, probably one thing evolution f***ed up. <laughs>